It's time to jump back again into Gran Turismo 6 to talk about another car which I think has a decent to good chance of coming back again in the future of Gran Turismo, be it in GT7 as an update or in GT8 maybe as a day one vehicle, whatever the case may be. I seem to recall this one being in, I think, the leaked data mining list. Maybe it wasn't, I can't remember now. But either way, I'll probably flash it on screen whether it was or not. But it is, of course, the C5 generation Corvette Z06. Now, in particular, the one that I'm driving here is the later addition to the series, which we most recently saw in GT6, which is the premium. Of course, there was a premium and a non-premium. Kind of pointless to have them both, in my opinion. A similar situation to the two different versions of the SLR McLaren. Really not necessary at all, to be honest. But in the case of this car, it is a very curious omission from the game's lineup, especially as a day one car, because it's such a fan favorite. Of course, we have stuff like the C6ZR1, the C8 as an update vehicle, etc. but the C5 is such a stalwart of the Gran Turismo series, the C5R racing version even more so, you could say, than the road car. It's such a beloved car, which is ironic given that it wasn't necessarily the absolute best of cars, but it was such a good all-round race car that was so fun to use. You can have great uh, rivalries, great battles with the Team Orica Viper and various others too. It was just a really pleasant car to work with, and with every single generation of Corvette, you know it's going to be a great rival to any other car of its time, and this is not an exception. Now, one of the funny things I find about this car is that the Dodge Viper, in particular its engine, is based around the triple 500 mentality. 500 cubic inches, 500 horses, 500 foot-pounds of torque. The Corvette in this game, specifically, of course you have to go with Gran Turismo specs here, it's more obsessed with the number four, because it's got 400 horsepower, 400 torque, 1,414 kilos. So fours across the board, it's actually a little bit over on power, 405. If I recall correctly, I think you could get 850 horses out of this thing. I want to say 850. 147, but I could be remembering wrong. And in terms of its point level, well, it was about on par with what you'd expect for its kind of sports car or super sports car grouping. And one of the classic things about the Corvette is that it's always really well priced. The brand new C8, of course, rocked the world with its prices, continuing to be such an affordable car based on how much additional tech had to go into making a mid-engine Corvette for the first time, they still managed to give it a great price. The C7 likewise, the C5 definitely, and the C6 as well. They are always such affordable cars, even undercutting on some occasions stuff like the Nissan GTR, which itself is not that expensive either. This one's 54 grand, which is nothing really in Gran Turismo 6 terms or in any Gran Turismo game really. It's a great car stock. It's an even better car when modified. The fact that it was already a premium means it's 9 tenths of the way there and it's such a fan favorite like i said that i think it will be so well received you can easily imagine seeing the silhouette for this thing in an update for example or seeing it in a trailer maybe one of the background cars going around a particular returning circuit maybe for a release date trailer it's just that kind of car and one of the great things of course as well now regarding the visual upgrades in particular is that you don't necessarily even need to have a racing version it would be nice to have a c5r as well but with the new class system within the game, it might not necessarily be quite as useful as it used to be. Some of the older cars feel like they lack a bit of pace compared to the newer stuff, so that could happen here, being as it would probably be in Group 3, I would imagine. The road version, though, you could fit some of the similar visual upgrades that we had in GT6. This was one of those premiums that had some really cool upgrades. The flat floor, for example, if I recall correctly, gave it a really nice diffuser. On the back, it was a great-looking car, and you could kind of turn it into a special project style replica of a C5R, even if you couldn't build the actual thing. So it's very versatile. It's already a great sports car, like I said, and it's tremendous both in a straight line, especially for its power at the time in GT6, but also now you know it would be even better in comparison to the other cars, especially once you factor in engine swaps. Overall though, that's it for my thoughts on the C5. Like I said, a very strange car not to have as a day one vehicle, in my opinion, given how legendary it is in the franchise, and it seems like they've been focusing more on like the C6 onwards more so. With that being said, we have seen a few Corvettes added in updates, such as the classic C1, and of course on the other end of the spectrum, the C8. So the Corvette still has a very good presence. The ZR1 is already a massively popular car, the C4, and especially the C6. So this one, it's just a natural one to have. And at this point, well, we have every other generation. So it's a glaring one not to have. We have C1, C2, C3, C4, C6, C7, and C8, but no C5s. It's a strange choice not to have it in there. Like I said, that's it for my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours down below. And until next time, I'll see you with more. But for now, thanks for watching.